Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, welcome to 1 Kings chapter 10. Uh, there are 29 verses in this chapter. Beginning in verse 1, it says here, uh, the name of Solomon versus the fame of Solomon. Uh, so Shema is the word. Now we know that as uh, hear, to hear the hearing of, so it is not the same thing. Uh, it's rendering it as the name, so the, sh the Shem as in name, not as in fame. However, it is important to note that a name could also be understood uh, as a reputation and perhaps even fame, you know, when someone's reputation precedes them, for example. Uh, it describes riddles versus hard questions. So uh, when I looked into the this word khida or khida, it means uh, puzzle, trick, conundrum. Uh, so similar to riddles, I would say. In verse 3, uh, our first significant difference, it says that Solomon answered all her questions uh, versus he told her all her questions. Um, so it seems that uh, in the Masoretic text, Solomon had a uh, ability to uh, reveal her questions without her even speaking. He knew them intuitively beforehand. He had some kind of uh, ESP ability. Uh, in the Septuagint, that's not what is happening. We just read that he a he answered all her questions. Simple as that. <clears throat> and then it says here, overlooked. There was not a question overlooked by the king. So he addressed every question that she had. Versus there was not anything hid from the king. So again, further uh, pushing this narrative that Solomon revealed the uh, Sheba or the Queen of Sheba's questions to her and she could not hide anything from him in her heart um, and again it says here answer versus told so this is not a supernatural event where Solomon has like, psychic abilities and can read her mind or, or her heart simply Solomon answered all her questions okay verse 5 his raiment, talking about Solomon's raiment versus his uh, his servants and ministers' uh, apparel. So not Solomon's apparel. It's not focusing on what he was wearing. It's uh, focusing on those who are serving him, his servants. Uh, it says his whole burnt offering versus his ascent by which he went up. Uh, and it also mentions uh, he offered the offering in the house of Adonai. She was utterly amazed. Uh, in the Masoretic, describes how he ascended perhaps stairs by going up into the house, and there was no more spirit in her. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Verse 6, words versus acts. I'm going to say that that is... Uh, bordering on significant difference there. So let's denote that as a significant difference. It's one thing to speak versus another thing to have the actions to back it up. But interestingly enough, uh, Solomon is only, uh, I should say, the Queen of Sheba is reporting or exclaiming that uh, she was amazed regarding his words, not not his acts. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 7. Goodness versus prosperity. So uh, I believe this is possibly referring to his character, uh, Solomon's character traits, his attributes, not so much his outwardly, uh, or I should say his outward wealth, his possessions. 
Verse 8, another significant difference, possibly even a big difference, talking about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the Queen of Sheba saying, Blessed or happy are your wives versus happy are your men. Okay, so yeah, that is a, let's just double check, make sure that whether this is gender neutral, I do not know. Okay, these are men. These are his men, okay. <clears throat> so that's verse 8. Verse 9, there is an omission of to establish. So Adonai loved Israel. And how did he express this? How did he show his love towards them? By establishing King Solomon forever. Uh, I should say not, not King Solomon, establishing Israel forever. Okay, so that, that was a mistake in my notes. I'm going to delete that. It's actually Israel that he established, not King Solomon forever. Because King Solomon only has a limited life span. <clears throat> and then in the Masoretic, it describes how Adonai loved Israel, but doesn't, it does not describe anything specific as to how uh, his love is expressed. So it, it is nonspecific as to the way he would show his love. In verse 10, uh, not so much a difference, just a thought that came up. Uh, Sheba, or the Queen of Sheba, in the Greek Saba, uh, there are many different ideas of who this queen is, where did she come from, It's probably the biggest question. And I think we should do a video on that, on this channel, uh, where the Queen of Sheba is actually from. Some claim uh, it was the country in the Middle East of Yemen, and others claim that it was the Asian country of the Philippines. So that should be a separate video. Okay, I won't go into that <clears throat> any further. Verse 12, um, buttresses versus pillars. Okay, uh, let me just look up what a buttress is in the meantime. Okay, so a buttress is a structure made of stone that rests against a wall seems to be more of a medieval uh, architectural uh, structure, but uh, pillar actually makes more sense, in, just in my opinion. Maybe buttress was not the right, was not as accurate as a, a pillar. Just looking at the historical context, how could they have buttresses when they did not exist? Uh, during this time in ancient history. <clears throat> okay, verse 15, there's an omission of the tributes. So uh, tributes were given to King Solomon, but we, we do not have an inkling of that in the Masoretic. It describes how these merchants and subjects came from beyond. Uh, we don't know where that is, but in the Masoretic, it describes it as Arabia. So is that, is Arabia a, is that a good translation of beyond Arabia? Okay, it just says night, Arab. So it does not <clears throat> seem to match. Uh, we have a lot of discrepancy of numbers. In verse 16, 200 spears versus 300 targets which is uh, sin sh sina. Okay, what is a target? Is that a spear or is that a shield? Okay, let's double check. That is a shield. Okay, so shields versus uh, spears. <clears throat> so I'll put in brackets. Shields. As well, uh, 300 uh, versus 600 in verse 16. Uh, talking about the shekels of gold. So 300 shekels versus 600 of gold. Verse 19. Uh, calves in bold relief versus the top of the throne. Verse 22. Wrought stones and hewn stones versus apes and peacocks. That is a wild difference. That going to say that's a significant difference in terms of what is being described. One is inanimate and one is uh, 
you know, there are living creatures. Uh, we have a rep, uh, yes, a repetition of the previous chapter. It's a large portion that has been omitted. It is specifically the verse of uh, chapter 9 of First Kings, verse 15. I'm not going to read all of that, but you can simply look at that as I scroll through it. Okay, verse 24, there's an omission of the kings of the earth. So it's not all the earth, it's specifically referring to the kings. Verse 25, there's an addition of silver. Uh, stacta versus armor. Now I'm going to look up what stacta means. Okay, I'm glad I looked it up because stacta is a sweet spice. It is not armor. It's very different from armor something used in war, in battle, and Stacta is not used in battle. Verse 26, we have 4,000 mares uh, versus 1,400 chariots. Um, and then there's an omission of, he ruled, uh, talking about King Solomon, ruled over all the kings from the river to the land of the Philistines and to the borders of Mizraim. Verse 27, there's an omission of and gold. Okay, so it wasn't just that King Solomon made silver to be very common in abundance. It was both gold and silver. So that is an interesting, actually an important omission. I'm going to say, uh, note here, significant difference because gold is very valuable even to this day. Uh, verse 28 reads, uh, the Q versus linen yarn. Okay, let's look up. It says mikveh. Mikveh. Hope. Okay, I understand mikveh as being like a, a place to just immerse yourself. So I'm going to look up the Q and see what that means. Okay, hold on one moment. Okay, Thakiu seems to be a place, a geographic location, but there does not seem to be any information as to where that is. Uh, that seems to be a very mysterious and cryptic location. So that is verse 28. Uh, verse 29, a discrepancy in numbers once again, looking at uh, 100 versus 600. So we have 100 shekels of silver versus 600 of silver, and then 50 uh, shekels of silver versus 150. So we can see inflation at play here. Uh, so what is the price for a chariot in the Septuagint? Only 100 uh, silver. What is the price for a chariot in the Masoretic? 600. What is the price for a, a horse? 50. In the Septuagint, what is what is the price for a horse in the Masoretic? One fifty. So we can see the uh, prices are very <laughs> a lot higher in the Masoretic. And then it describes by sea. Uh, they came out by sea uh, versus by their means, by their power. Okay, so that's all for this chapter, First uh, Kings chapter ten. Thank you very much for your time. Till next time, I bid you all. Shalom Alechem, Yberechecha Adonai Bishmarecha, Salamu Alekum, Warachma Tulahi, Wabarak Artu, Irini Mazisu, Pax Ubiskum, peace be unto you, may the Lord protect you and bless you always in the name of Yeshua. I pray all these things in in his good will. Amen.